Helsinki, daughter of the Baltic, the Gibraltar of the North, a dividing line between East and West, and a modern and liberal-minded metropolis. Founded in 1550 by Swedish King Gustav Vasa as a trading center, and in 1812, Tsar Alexander I made it the capital of the Principality of Finland. The city's new look reflected the power of the Russian Tsar, as reflected by Helsinki's splendid cathedral. This sacred masterpiece was created by Karl Ludwig Engel. In addition to worship, it was designed as a meeting place for the increasing number of Protestant Lutherans. The green copper dome and its golden adornments and four side towers dominate the city center. The roof of its facade is supported by huge pillars. The interior of the cathedral, although relatively plain, is an impressive sight. The altar painting features a scene from the death of Christ. Above the marble pulpit hangs a carved wooden canopy, partly painted in shining gold. The ground plan of the church is that of a Greek cross, with a narrow balcony at each end. Each arch is beautifully decorated. Niches in the corner pillars contain various works of art, statues of Luther, Melanchthon and Mikhail Agricola, Finland's historic reformer. The organ's 5,614 pipes and 57 stops were once filled by air from a massive pair of bellows. Now an electric motor does the job. Due to its elevated position and huge dimensions, this is Helsinki's most prominent landmark. The Sena Tenore is located in the center of the city. The square is dominated by a monument and surrounded by a number of fine neoclassical buildings. Tsar Alexander II included public, ecclesiastical and academic buildings in the square, government offices, a cathedral and university. His statue is surrounded by various figures that symbolize law, science, art, work and peace. A disastrous fire in 1808 destroyed all this area's original wooden buildings. However, an extensive reconstruction program was subsequently brought into being. The planning and rebuilding of the city took place without delay, and in around 1840, the center of the city had mostly been completed. It was a popular place to meet. Another landmark is the Uspensky Cathedral, situated at the city's southern harbour, the largest Russian Orthodox church in both Western and Northern Europe. Built in 1868 according to traditional Russian design, its exterior is of red brick and it is crowned by 13 gilded domes.
The interior of the cathedral is dominated by painted granite pillars and a magnificent gilded iconostasis that was created by the Russian artist Stilchov. Orthodox churches are always built in an east-west direction with the altar pointing east. Thus the worshippers face the rising sun toward paradise. The altar's precious icons form two rows, crowned by Jesus who is seated above a regal door. The Holy Nicholas is one of many saints whose pictures hang on the cathedral's walls and side altars. Close to the altar is a picture board that is known as an iconostasis as the altar is the symbol of God's holy kingdom, heaven. Each wall, pillar and ceiling is highly decorated. The tradition of iconography was mainly developed in monasteries. The subject matter is restricted to traditional ideas. They adhere to a strict depiction of the Holy Scriptures. The central dome and vaults of the altar feature a starry blue sky. Thus, the divine Orthodox service is even more touching and incorporates liturgical text of the early Middle Ages. The Finlandia Talo is Helsinki's concert and congress center, a work of art that encapsulates the building and design philosophy of Alva Aalto, one of Finland's most prominent architects of the 20th century. The white colored opera house was completed in 1993 it was a daring project as the city's treasury was empty. But music reigned supreme and today the building is an important part of the city's cultural life. The Olympic Station has always been a symbol of a modern and independent Finland. It was designed for the Olympic Games of 1940. Due to the Second World War, its inauguration was delayed until 1952. It was a spectacular sight. It was only in the 1990s that this structure of steel and concrete had to be restored, a fact that indicates the high standard of work of its creator. In front of the main entrance is a monument to Finland's most famous sportsman, Paavo Nurmi, a long-distance runner and national hero. A monumental building of reddish-grey sandstone rises high into the sky, the Ediskunta Talo, the Finnish parliament. A row of huge pillars supports the front of the classical building. Wide steps lead up to the building. The bulwark 
of this young democracy presents itself with contemporary precision. But the architect, Siren, also used the architecture of earlier times as its model. The parliament building is flanked by various figures of the country's first presidents that were created by the Finnish sculptor Altonen at the end of the 1950s. Since 1918, a granite bear has guarded the entrance to the magnificently restored Kansalis Museo, National Museum. Prehistoric finds, the oldest fishing net in the world, and numerous sacred historic objects are included in the museum's fascinating exhibits. A striking sloped tower rises up from the castle-like building. In the city centre and surrounded by various tall buildings is an almost hidden yet extraordinary house of God, Rock Church. Following years of discussion and several design contests, this modern sacred building was created by the Suomalainen brothers. Blasted into the rock, the flat dome of the church is hardly recognizable from the outside. But in the interior, the rugged rock and mystic light create a truly captivating atmosphere. The simplicity of the church and its close association with the elements is quite thought-provoking. Even the organ pipes look as though they're growing out of the rock. The superb acoustic qualities of the church make it a popular concert venue. This Protestant Lutheran church can seat a congregation of 750. Each year, around half a million visitors come here. The monumental Rautertiersema train station is a good example of the Finnish version of Art Nouveau. It features a huge clock tower that is 48 meters high. The main entrance of this massive railway station is flanked by a number of mighty granite lamp standards. They decorate the building's simple stone facade. The station is of highly functional design and each of its halls is clearly divided. The platforms were enlarged during the station's most recent renovations and glass roofs add to its appeal. They protect passengers from the elements, yet let in maximum light. Trains embark from here to travel the length and breadth of Finland and also beyond to various neighbouring countries. Few railway stations are as appealing to the eye. Even the luggage depository is spick and span.
It's hardly surprising that architect Eliel Saarinen's design for this station was used as a model for many others throughout Europe. The city centre is a harmonious ensemble of numerous buildings. And even the trams don't disturb the status quo. Finland's most important composer, Jan Sibelius, also has a monument dedicated to him. It's located in a park close to a river. The sculptress Isla Hiltonen created this work in 1967, an organ-shaped building constructed of welded and polished steel pipes. Amazing that she created an image of the one musical instrument that was least favoured by Sibelius, the organ. The famous composer played an important role in Finland's national identity. His music is loved all over the world. In summer, the townsfolk like to stroll through the city and Kalpatori Market Square is a popular meeting place. In the middle of the square is the city's earliest public monument, an obelisk that commemorates the Tsarina Alexandra. Market Square is a lively place and the hustle and bustle of the market stalls has an almost southern ambience. Skilled craftsmen carve wood and create tempting souvenirs in just a few minutes. Close by, fur is offered for sale and farmers shout out a list of today's fresh fruit and vegetables. It's a fascinating spectacle. The market is open each day except Sunday. Large numbers of noisy seagulls pounce on any food that is available. The sea is nearby. Local fishermen offer their produce for sale, a great range of tasty seafood. The old Vaha Kaupahali Market Hall is situated on the edge of the market square, next to the quay, a magnificent building. The red-yellow brick building dates back to 1888. 100 years later, Gustav Nystrom's creation was restored for the first time. The hall features several of the original market stalls that have been well preserved right up to the present day. There's also a large assortment of delicacies, including several kinds of preserved vegetables and fruit. And also a huge variety of good quality cheese, sausages and tasty varieties of meat.
Many types of cured fish and seafood are also on display. The hall was once a fish market. It's located close to the Fisherman's Quay. Fast food is also on offer, much of it featuring fish, the region's most important produce. A visit to this market is an absolute must on any trip to Helsinki. The city's southern harbour is always busy. Here, huge ferry boats embark for Stockholm or Turku. A mixture of both small and large ferry boats use this lively harbour. They connect the city with some of the many islands around the coast. Pleasure boats and water buses negotiate their way through the harbour. Helsinki is closely associated with the sea. It was once a rival of the trading town of Tallinn that is situated on the opposite side of Finnish Bay. The city began to blossom in 1748 when it was decided to build a mighty fortress on an island just off the coast. When the Russian principality subsequently made Helsinki its capital city, its population went from strength to strength and the influence of the Tsar was everywhere to see. The tumult of the First World War and Russia's October Revolution of 1917, during which the Tsar was overthrown, brought things to a head. Thus, Helsinki became the capital of the independent Republic of Finland. A short boat journey leads to a picturesque sea fort close to the harbour. Suomenlinna, one of the largest fortified complexes in Europe. In 1748, the Swedes began to erect a huge fortified complex on the six islands just off the coast. It took around 40 years to create this defensive bastion that was also home to the coastal fleet. But this tranquil scene is deceptive. For in 1808, the Russians attacked. They continued to construct the fortress. Around 10,000 people lived here at that time. In 1855, several days of cannon fire terrified the city's population. 70 battleships of the Franco-British Alliance destroyed the fortress. The old castle and monumental neoclassical buildings of this place are irresistible. Helsinki is captivating and has rightly been declared Europe's capital of culture. <laughs> 